63-year-old Charles Cyril Cutler was a happily married father of two who lived in Dunsmuir Road, Stamford Hill, Hackney, London, and was described by those who knew him as a lovable old man. Charles was well known in the community, and the neighbouring children would affectionately refer to him as Old Arthur. By 1956, Charles had gained employment as a night watchman on the White housing estate on Daly Street. His hut was located on the corner of Anderson Road and Digby Road. He was quite responsible when it came to his safety in the hut and always locked the doors whilst on duty, only ever unlocking the doors if he was approached by someone he was familiar with. Despite being safety conscious, Charles was known to nod off on the odd shift. On the 1st of September 1957, Charles was on duty at the hut as usual. At this time, his wife Catherine was in hospital, though the reason why remains unclear. Charles's 13-year-old son, Edward, who was more commonly known as Teddy, went to the hut to visit his father to share some sweets with him. However, upon his arrival, he found the door locked. Teddy visited his father often at the hut, so he found it rather unusual that his father wouldn't unlock the door. Teddy knocked, but Charles did not answer. As a result, the boy climbed through one of the open windows. However, upon entering the hut, he found his father dead, blood around his head. Panicked, Ted escaped from the hut, running into two female friends, Janet Brown, aged nine, and Leslie Andrews, aged five, who witnessed him climb through the window. He screamed at them, desperate for help, so the girls went to neighbours and told them of Old Arthur's gruesome murder. They managed to catch the attention of an apartment building caretaker who went to investigate their claims. The caretaker, George Gardner, was let into the hut by Teddy Cutler after sending the two girls away. Upon entering, George found Charles lying face down on the floor, blood around his head where he had been struck. His feet were tied and his hands were bound behind his back, and stuffed into his mouth was a black silk necktie. Two neckties of a similar fashion were also found within the hut, but it's unclear whether they belonged to Charles. His glasses case was also lying underneath him. George also noted a penknife and a fountain pen near Charles's head, and he noticed that the room was in a state of disarray. The phone receiver was broken and lying on the floor, and the drawers of various filing cabinets had been opened. It appeared that some sort of scuffle had occurred in the hut, and Charles had put up a fight. The post-mortem examination revealed that Cutler had suffered slow and painful suffocation, the cause of death officially being asphyxiation. It was believed that Charles died a few hours prior to having been gagged with the necktie, which had been overtied with another tie. Over-effective gagging most likely contributed to his demise, according to pathologists. Charles's death shocked the local community, who only ever had good things to say about him. Who would so brutally kill a kind and loving husband and family man, and more importantly, why? Following an examination of the scene, police were of the opinion that robbery was most likely motive in this case, despite the fact that Charles never kept any money in the watchman's hut. No news reports from the time mention anything being stolen from the hut, or anything upon Charles's person. If he had not been victim of robbery, what were the assailant's reasons behind attacking Mr Cutler? Was it a random attack, or was it personal? 
Charles had reportedly had a conversation the day he died where he mentioned to a woman that he had a weak heart, but also stated that despite his age and heart issues, he didn't want to die. It was initially considered that he may have suffered a heart attack, but this was later ruled out after pathologists examined Charles's body. Very little clues or evidence were found which could help police with their inquiries. Therefore, the possibilities as to what happened to Charles are almost endless. Police sought out two male individuals in regards to the so-called nightmare murder, both between the ages of 25 and 30. They were seen near the watchman's hut by witnesses at around 12.20am on the day in question. One of the men was described as having short, dark curly hair and was thick set, whereas the other male was described as slim, around six feet tall with straight, dark hair. It is unclear whether the two males were ever traced or questioned. During the investigation, a number of witnesses came forward with some interesting information. A young couple walking near to the hut heard Charles shouting along the lines of don't touch me, don't hit me for about five or ten minutes, but despite concerns from the male individual, the 17-year-old female, Linda Andrews, believed that Cutler was having another one of his nightmares, and so they moved on and thought nothing more of it. The girl stated to police that she didn't want to disturb old Arthur whilst he was asleep. Andrews later stated her regret and feelings of guilt, having not gone to check on Charles that fateful night. An inquest into Charles' death was conducted, and following its closure, the jury returned with a verdict on the 28th of October 1957. Their verdict was murder by a person or persons unknown. To this day, it remains unclear who killed Charles Cutler and why. He was a much-loved character in Hackney, who had no known enemies. He wasn't a man who ever made trouble. The devastation of his death hit the Cutler family hard, especially 13-year-old Teddy, who found his father's body that fateful day in 1957. This case has remained unsolved for almost 65 years, and authorities are no closer to apprehending Charles's killer. The trail has simply gone cold. <laughs>